Hello and welcome back to another episode of Geeks of Museum. This is Nathan. This is Ryan. As usual. <laughs> and this week's episode is about myths and legends. We touched a little bit on it, a little bit on it uh, last episode, but it was just real quick. We're gonna go a little bit more into depth uh, this episode. And I don't know about you. I'm ready to just kind of jump straight into it. I don't really have anything to. Yeah, me neither. To to say. So if you're good to go. Yeah, go for it. Let's hop right in. I'm ready. All right, go ahead. I'll let you start. What what uh, what are you gonna? What's yours that you you want to mention? Okay, well, of all myth, myths and legends, um, Greek Greek mythology is my favorite because I don't think the Romans had many. They probably had some legends. They might have had myths, but I never really studied them. But to me, the Romans always seemed like they didn't even have their own gods. Really, they were like one. You know, they basically were like, let's take the Greek gods and just rename them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all they really did. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> okay, that was weird. Um, You're starting to cough now, too. I'm catching pneumonia. Um, so you're going you're gonna to kind of touch on the Greek, Well, I mean, there's all kinds Greek of... mythology. Yeah, but I mean, there's like a lot of like, I live a lot of Native American... Uh, legends like that like the one we want to go see Devil's Tower one day the legend of Devil's Tower is basically how I think it was two Indian girls or whatever Mm -hmm. running away from a I want to say it was a giant bear it's the only thing I can think of with claws and they got to this thing and they prayed or asked for help or something like that and then their like I guess the their, their god of the earth or whatever like that yeah put I'm I'm not really sure. I might have to I might have to read this later on to find out. But basically, put its fist up into the ground underneath the girls and made made that made that you know the All tower. The tower. And then the the grooves on the side were from the bear trying to get at the girls on the top. That's why there's grooves all around the mountain. He couldn't oh, he couldn't okay. get them, so he left them alone. That's why Devil's Towers them. That's pretty looks, cool. Looks the way it does. I, I've never heard that. See, I like I like stuff like that because it's always it's always trying to explain how something came to be because way back when they didn't know they just went I bet this is how this works yeah. like the story of why I know that story from the cult because there was a song not the cult like I was an actual cult the band the cult um, but they had a story about brother, Worth, brother wolf sister moon and it was two Indians I think and basically how the story goes is and by the end of the story the brother is a wolf and his sister's the moon, and he misses her, so that's why. I, and so he, he he yells up to her, you know. Oh, that's okay. why that's why wolves howl at the moon. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just little things like that. I I, I think I, they're cool little stories. Yeah. Yeah. There's a uh, what's the other one? The, the, the other the one Native American is it uh, Skinwalkers or Wendigo? Oh yeah, the uh, yeah one the, the, the Wendigo skin, the one Wendigo. I think skinwalkers and Wendigo are different. A Wendigo is somebody who eats or cannibalizes somebody, yeah, and then you become you become a, yeah you become a Wendigo. Skinwalkers just a shape changer, shape changer basically. Yeah. yeah, but they're called skinwalkers because they don't shape they don't shape shift like you know they form they basically peel off their skin and they become something else. And then when they have to come then they have to change back they peel off their skin again and they become. That just sounds painful. Yeah, it does, dude. <laughs> just a terror. Rip, tear your away, rip your skin off and yeah they do have those in uh that that show Supernatural though they have skin uh, walkers. skinwalkers yeah and they had, they had a they fought a Wendigo before too. And it was like the se- second episode they fought a Wendigo Wind- or as Wendigo as they were calling Wendigo. them you know what another one is uh the uh Jersey Devil oh yeah and there's like a, a bunch of different well some of the legends are monsters yeah, like this one takes place by the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. Yeah, and part one of the legends is supposedly the. I don't know. There's there's like a couple different versions of one. She made a pact with the devil. And she had a thirteenth child was to be <laughs> deformed or saw her. The devil got her thirteenth kid. Another one is when she was having her thirteenth kid. It was so painful and all that. She's like cursed this child, and he came out like looking all devilish. That's messed up. Wood. They just threw it out the woods. It's like just, ah, just blame, just blame that baby. You're, you're the woman who got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, help me. 
and how <laughs> the description of that thing is always weird. It always looks whenever I see pictures or or uh, artist rendering of the Jersey Devil, it looks so goofy. Oh yeah, it's always so weird. Like it's got the head of a horse, the wigs of a bat, the body of a I don't know, like a <laughs> uh, something in the. <laughs> It's up on its high legs, look like horse legs. This nice. It's done these tiny. It looks so goofy. Every time I hear, see it, I just, I just think it's like. like really? Oh, that's hello, that's the best you could. If he, if, if he could talk, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it wouldn't sound like that, though. Because it would have to sound like somebody from Jersey. Oh. Hey, what are you doing? I'm walking here. Hey, what's that over there? <laughs> I'm trying to fly here. That sounds more like, more like New York. That's like New York. <laughs> Is it, yeah. I, I don't know. I can't do accents. I'm not good at accents. <laughs> Apparently, I, apparently I can talk. I can do a good Texas accent. Well, you didn't live there for how long? I know, but I was asking uh, my one of my. I worked at this building, and my friend uh, Shelly is the property manager there, and she was talking about how they had they had to do a group, a group training exercise or something like that. And cool. she was like, "Going, I was thinking about going to like a shooting range." And then. She said, I'll probably just go to a bowling alley. I go, no, shooting, shooting. I was like, shooting range sounds good. So I was like, and then I was like, you ever been to a shooting range? And the way I said it, she goes, you've never sounded more in Texas in your life. Before and I go, range? and I was like, is it, wow, what, what do you mean? Is it the way I said it? And she said, you said shooting range, like, <laughs> <laughs> like a Texan. And I was like, because she's from Oklahoma. And I was, I was joke, I was oh, joking about okay. it. I was telling her the Oklahoma joke. Which is? Oklahoma sucks. Sucks so bad it keeps Texas from falling in the ocean. But um, <laughs> oh, those good rivalries. Yeah, I, that's always weird because I do remember um, talking to some people in Australia and bringing up others. Like, yeah, we've been to the city, but them it's not territories; it's more like cities. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my announcement thing from. On my on my on my on my. Tablet. I hope that came through. That was awesome. That was that was cool. I like I like that. It's from Monty Python's Holy Grail. <laughs> um. Have you, you know the. Uh... But like yeah, like uh, we went to we were Bris- Brisbane or Brisbane or something like that, and I mentioned uh, like Cairns, like that, and they're like, oh, those people in Cairns suck or something like that, you know. And then there was like back and forth, you know. I was like, going, really? That's how it is here? You guys can't stand each other from in different cities? It'd be like, you know, people in Nashville can't stand people from Memphis or something like that. I'm like, going, I don't, I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. I mean, it might not. I don't know. I was, shoot, they may hate each other for all we know. Yeah. I just know you... I, I think there's more carjackings in Memphis, but I'm not sure. I think, there is. I think Memphis is known for being but a I've, rough. But I've never stopped in Memphis. I always drove through when I was yeah. driving from here to go to go back to Texas. Yeah, I've never stopped there either. I'm just a drive through. Yeah, they've got their their version of the the uh, pyramid. Oh yeah, that's where the uh, that's where the Memphis Bell is. The plane. In the the pyramid. Is I, that think the, I think it's I think it's I think it's off to the side. Oh, okay. it. yeah, it's like underneath a a cloth uh, awning or whatever you call it, like an overhang thing. Yeah. To keep it to keep it out of the weather, you can still see the bullet holes in, in that plane. See, I would, I'd like to go see that. That's the is it the Memphis Bell Museum? I think so. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool to go to. Because I remember seeing it and going, oh, I, I remember this movie. I remember this plane. Yeah. I was like, where's the where's the, the guts all over the wing of the, yeah. the front of the plane? Guts all over the nose. <laughs> guts all over the nose. Oh, that part. When, he, when he, that plane gets, that uh, B-17 gets cut in half, you just hear that the guy screaming. Oh, yeah. It just kind of crackles. I'm like, I'm like, bail up. But then I'm like, well, you don't know because. Yeah, the G-Force is probably. The G-Force is just, yeah, he, he probably couldn't get anywhere. Like, dang oh, it, I'd, it's not fair. I'd find a way. You you watch me. I'd eat, I'd eat a hole through that plane. <laughs> <laughs> Life finds a way. <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right, go ahead. Well, let's hop into your into, the, into your Greek mythologies. Well, most of them like. I like the ideas of like they didn't understand where we got fire from, so their idea was no, a guy gave it to us. He stole, he stole it from the gods. Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to us. And then he got punished for it. Because you can't you can't get things for free. That's right. <laughs> you get punished for stealing. Give it to you. I think a lot of these also have to do with, like, you know, the, like I always like those stories that have, like, a, what do you call it? A thing at the end of it? A, 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 uh, a message or a lesson? Yeah. I, I, what is that called again? Yeah, I can't remember the exact word you're thinking of, but. 
I hate it when I can't think words. Um, What's the, um, oh, I like the Odyssey. That's a good story. You're you're way more adverse to. What is that? That might not even be, that might not even be the, the adverse right to. Adverse to no. You know more a lot more about Greek mythology. I got into Greek Greek mythology because my dad and I went to go see the original Clash of the, Clash Titans, of the Titans with yeah. Harry Hamlin and. Oh the man! Great Ray Harryhausen stuff. Yeah. Washington. Oh, such that's such good <laughs> stuff. And then they had the the one of the better versions of Medusa ever made. Yeah. I do kind of like the new one from the the more recent one, but the fact that she looked her face because in the shadows, if you just walked up on, if you saw a very pretty woman's face in the shadows, you'd be thinking, "Wow, what's up with her?" You might walk towards her. And then she just goes, ha ha, bitch, I'm a snake. Yeah. And you're like, oh, crap. Snake here. Ah, crap, I'm a statue. <laughs> I better strike a pose. Yeah, you know, they, did, they, did, they, did, they did, never look like a fucking talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, folks. I still that never really looked like it was a painful. Oh, it turned yeah. it into stone? Yeah. I don't know. You have to think maybe you're, you're, like, you're hardening from the but, inside out. Possibly. I don't it know. took like a few seconds. Yeah, seconds. it was real quick. But yeah, what, what's his name had the best one in there? Yeah, As usual, movie. spoilers for everything we ever talk about yeah. movie wise. But Mads uh, Mikkelsen. yeah, Mads Mickelson, he because he said his his daughter when she was sixteen, she was taken from him. The god the gods claimed her, and he goes and he goes and he, he knew she was down in Hades, and he goes he goes if I ever, if I ever get the chance, I'm gonna sm- I'm gonna smirk in the face of a god, and he, <laughs> he got to do that yeah, to Medusa because he impaled he impaled her tail with the stalactite. Yeah, and then he was standing there, and she looked back at him, and she was like. You know, all in his face, like roaring, like hissing in his face, and he just looked at her and he smiled. And when he completely turned to stone, his smirk cracked to the side yeah. of his face. Like, that well, that's one, badass. <laughs> that movie, Clash of the Titans, the, the remake. That was one movie where, like, for years, I was I was always thinking, oh man, Clash of the Titans would be a great movie to remake because you could use modern tech, technology. Yeah, and then they did it, and, you're and like, then I watched uh, it. I'm like, I like the older one, and I was never even a big fan of the of the original. Yeah, I like I like the old one just because you know nostalgia. But the yeah. other fact that. I like the giant scorpions in that in that old one than in the new one. Because that one thing that always got me, in the end when he's fighting the Kraken, and just suddenly those Monster Slayer guys appear in the city on a giant scorpion. How the fuck do they get in the city on a giant scorpion? They must have a lot of money or something. You never saw us. <laughs> just handing out coins and going through. Well, you mentioned the, the Kraken. The Kraken was pretty sweet. The cra- okay, now, in Greek mythology, is the Kraken like the Kraken from the old one? Or I don't is it know. The, is it the squid? Because I think the Kraken is actually Danish. The oh. giant squid. There was actually a thing on it. What's that show on YouTube with uh, the long-haired kid, Kyle, whatever? Oh, but he had, they had a uh, thing about how yeah, about how, much pre- how much weight the Kraken... Because the Kraken apparently can grab a whole ship and pull it underwater in one fell swoop. And he was doing the example like, get a beach ball and try to push it underwater... All that pressure you have to disperse, yeah. Because, but he was like, it was like to to take down like a pretty good size like you know sails and all that stuff like back in the day would take a lot of. It it could be done by two. I want to say blue whales. Are those the biggest biggest ones? Blue yeah, whales. Blue. It'd take two blue whales to pull one of those down, and but they have to swim continuously to keep it underwater. To keep but, it underwater. Uh, but, now that he also mentioned the fact of that the ship is going to be filled with water, therefore the buoyancy is going to go start to ease. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean to initially pull it underwater, but yeah. I mean, like he was, then he was talking about like the Titanic, how much pressure it would take to bring that down, and then like the oh, biggest yeah. ship in the world currently right now, which is a one of those super super giant tankers or super freights. Uh-huh. But he would say super freights. It would take oh uh, something like twenty five something ballistic something rockets or something like that to have, be able to have the energy to force it underwater. I mean, once you get underwater, it's going to flood and it'll, yeah. it's going to weigh less. But just, you don't, just heavier. the initial. Yeah. But that was, that was, that was a funny. Well, that, that Clash of the Titans too. The, anyway. the second one, a Wrath of the Titans. Yeah. I remember seeing the trailer for that thinking like, oh, this is going to be a fun, like just crazy. He's going to fight the, the, the yeah, Titans. He's, yeah, he's going to fight the Titans and the Chimera and something like that. And then I watched the movie and I'm like, this is worse than the remake of Clash of the Titans. This is awful. I think I would try. I would try to watch that movie twice. The first time I fell asleep. The second time, I think I just zoned out and just started doing it's, something else. Oh my god! Like the part with the Titan is pretty cool because it's so. Massive. I can't remember what the Titan looks like. But it's it it's is, just was one he spilling lava? Or yeah, it was just stuff? it was just that one. It was just the one Titan. That was it. Ah, okay. And I'm looking at that going like, because did did he fight a Chimera? Yeah, it was like right at the beginning. Yeah. 
I love the, I love the different creatures because I'm always like he does fight the the Minotaur. Oh yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah, I like the Minotaur. We'll go on that tail. We'll go on that tail in a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. You, that, you started to talk about it before we recorded. That like, tail. That tail me is man. Who came? Who come? Who came up with this stuff back then? Because <laughs> there had to be some guy just telling tales back in the day. Like yeah. Uh, who, who were the big ones? Um, we just mentioned them earlier. Yeah, Socrates. Socrates and, uh, Plato. and Plato. Yeah, they must have just been storytellers. They got like just people with great imagination. Yeah, Homer was Greek, right? Yeah, I think Homer. so. Yeah, he was probably no. just telling stories, and they were like on. Man, where does he come up with this stuff? This is awesome, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just coming up with these crazy ideas. But well, uh, the, uh, yeah, they, those movies, they kind of kind of disappointed me. Well, what about uh, we were kind of we mentioned Ray Harryhausen. What about did you like Jason and the Argonauts? Oh, the original one. Yeah, I guess there is only one. Yeah. Well, there was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They no, haven't remade that yet. No, Although I also. would like to see. I'm I'm tempted. I would like to see. CG. Oh, I I hate the fact that I may, I would actually like to see a remake. It just pisses me off because I don't want to give money away. Yeah. I don't want to give money and give these people. Oh, the people do like it because Ryan gave us some money. His money. We, we, I don't like it. I just wanted. Y'all already know Ryan's distaste for. No, I hate for I hate remakes. remakes. <laughs> Lazy fuckers. Three hundred thousand something scripts in in Hollywood, and they want to go. Let's remake this thing I've already seen back in the eighties. Yeah. Which you're you're gonna make it, and guess what? The original is still gonna be better, and you're you're just wasting you just wasting your money. You could have you could have made on something with more more imagination. And that's something to always remember. You always have the original to watch. Yeah, but I don't I'm, I don't like them. No, see, there there's a difference there. The millennials will always remember. Oh, this came out during my lifetime. This is the official one. Because yeah, we've had, there was there was there was there was movies about the Titanic before Titanic came out. Because I remember one of them. It was on it was on YouTube, and I rewatched it recently, and it made me laugh because I remember watching as a little kid, thinking this is so cool. Because they had the idea the idea that Titanic sank and, and all in one piece. Oh yeah. And then they went down, and they basically put these. On, it was like almost like the old. Uh, Scrooge McDuck thing where he filled the, the boat full of ping pong balls, but they just used these giant, like, inflatable things, and they brought the Titanic up on these gigantic, you know, did inflatable bubbles. Huh? Did it roar when it came back up? I did think it, it kind of did. It was like Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> but it came up, and then the only reason they got it up is because I think it had something to do with some Cold War, Cold War shit, where it was uh, some guy who was a thief had stolen something, and he locked himself in the vault of the uh, oh, and the best thing part, uh, Alec Guinness was in that movie. Was he really? Yeah, he was. He was. He was. He was the. He was the guy's partner or something like that. Or no, I think he was a. He was on the ship when it when it sank, and he and he was like he was he was a boy then or something like that. But he was talking about the majesty of the ship. And then when they brought it back up and they brought it into New York Harbor, which was kind of pretty cool, they floated the ship back. Because it finally made its it made its voyage. It got to New York where it was supposed to go. Right. That was that was part, that was kind of cool. Then they opened up the vault at the end, and the guy was the guy was he was well preserved because he was in the safe. Yeah. But he was underwater that whole time, so he, there was no water inside the vault. Basically, just mummified him. Right, I guess. Yeah, he just suffocated to death. Wouldn't that suck? That would man. Because he'd be on there going, I could get out, but I'm at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. This is turning less than myth and myth and Yeah, I know. We're, we're getting off. Sorry. We're getting uh, off track. But yeah, do you, do you have another specific one you want to go into? Who's the, well, who's the one the... I would like I would like a, a, a movie that I'd like to see because I love the scene in uh, Jason and the Argonauts with the skeletons when he yeah. he pulls the he pulls the teeth. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Bless you. Thank but you. he pulls the, uh, pulls the teeth from the Hydra and plants them and the skeletal warriors grow up. And they're not like pushover skeletal warriors. Like, I think he's got like six or seven guys left with him and they all die except for him he gets away like the skeletons basically oh, yeah. just ravage all, all, all of his all of his remaining warriors and Jason's the only one to get away and Jason of the Argonauts that's the one with the giant statue yeah moves and they, they get as they do something to his heel yeah cause it's supposed to be like is a, it, Her- is it supposed to be a thing of Hercules no yeah, Her- Hercules is there cause he, I'm sorry not Her- Achilles yeah I think it's supposed to be like a statue of Achilles but they open up its heel and all this molten steel comes out. And when it does, it falls over on this guy who was like, this is the movie. So it's not real, actually like Legends. But apparently there was this guy who was like, he went, he walked up to Hercules and he was like, I want to I be as great as you. And Hercules was like, huh, you know, whatever. And they were like, so they were like, hey, Her- hey Hercules, so it's to test your strength. 
And he took one of the dis the discus. Yeah. And he threw it across this bay and hit this rock because everyone was trying to trying to do that. And of course he threw it. And when they did it, it was claymation or it was stop motion because they couldn't actually. God forbid you throw a, a throw a frisbee at something <laughs> and hit anything. But they show it fly and then it hit because it was clay. It was a clay discus, I guess. And it flies and hits the rock. And he was like, he was like, ha ha. And everyone's like, going, oh, you know, we, we can't do that. And then the, the, the kid comes up and he goes, let me try. And they're like, because he's, he's a little dude. He's a little scrum, a little kind of skinny dude. Yeah. And he walks up and he looks at her. He judges the water and he looks at Hercules and then he throws it, but he skips it on the water. So it flies and it hits, and it hits the rock. So only him and Hercules were the ones to be able oh. to hit it. And I was like, ah, he was using his brain. He wasn't using his strength. But then he ends up getting killed when that, that iron golem falls on top of him. He got crushed. Yeah. Where's your strength now? Because he was underneath. He was going to get Hercules. He was going to get Hercules' spear. Oh. And then when he went to get the spear, it fell over on top of him. And then Hercules went out there, and he was trying to find him. He, <laughs> Hercules apparently is not bright enough to realize maybe it fell on him. He was, he was like, I'm not leaving this island until I find him. So they left him behind while, he, while they went. They continued on the voyage. Yeah. So Hercules was, her, her was probably walking around going, I don't know where he yeah. is. Uh, where's this kid out of all? I'm not going to look underneath the, yeah. the, the statue. Um, let's see. Pandora's box. Actually, here it says Pandora's jar, because yeah, apparently yeah. it was a jar. They, they didn't have boxes back then. They, they would have jars and pots. And what is What exactly is Pandora's box? Um, apparently, here it says... Uh, it kind of gives an idea of Pandora and Eve as a bias against women. <laughs> As women are the bestowers of all evil, basically. Because you always hear the thing like, oh, that's like opening Pandora's box, man. Yeah, because apparently it was Pandora, like everything bad came out of the box, but the only thing left inside the box was, I think, hope? At the very bottom, and the bottom of the jar or whatever like that state was, the only thing remaining was hope. The swarm of all the evils spilled out of, spilled out of the jar. Oh. And it was because of her curiosity. Because she, could, she couldn't leave well enough alone. Which... Doesn't just work for women. That that, that works for <laughs> works for every people. Yeah. In, every people in general. Some people just can't leave shit alone. Uh, Hercules, we just talked about. He had his little, his crazy labors. I won't see. You talk about these these old old time like Hercules and all these these supposedly uh, de, de, what do you call them, demigods. Yeah, demigods. I've got a theory on that. Jason and the Argonauts. Nah, I, won't, I won't get to do right now. It, we, we, <laughs> might, we might not get to do it just because of where it'll take it. Oh, is it a religious thing? Kind of, yeah. Oh, dude, I go, I go for it. Really get to it. Well, because it, it, it would just be my opinion. I don't know if anybody really wants to hear it, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, huh. who is the guy that's supposedly in Greek mythology that's like the dude who's, who's supposed to be really good at making armor? And like, oh, so oh, made that. Hephaestus. Hephaestus. Yeah. What was the, what was the deal with it? Do you, do you remember off the top of your head? I know Hephaestus was supposed to be very ugly, but he was the one who was married to Aphrodite, <laughs> the, the goddess of love. The one you look at and go, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, well, what was his deal? Was he trapped somewhere? He's all he allowed to make? No, I think he was just the blacksmith of the gods. But oh. he didn't, he, I think he he made weapons, but he also made little little trinkets and things. But I was like the fact that uh, you had Ares, who was the god of war, but you also had Athena, who was the goddess of war. But I always saw I always saw it as Ares was the actual war. He was the soldier. He went in. He was the muscle. He went in, fought, and like apparently he wasn't too bright, but he was very strong. So you know he went in hand to hand combat and all that stuff. Athena was the one. She would use her brain. She was all about the you know she could probably beat Ares just by you know. Uh, What's the word? Strategy. She can. Okay. She would use strategy and tactics, and he would just be like, "Just run forward and stab with my spear," because he's an idiot. Now, did um, they work together at all, or were they always at, at odds? I don't know if they were at odds, but she would be like, "Wasn't that in that movie? What was that movie? The one that was after 300? Because I actually like that. Oh, like that movie. Was the second one, three hundred, right? Uh, three hundred. Because I know of... Athena was in that. Rise. Because of... spoilers, she ends up getting killed. And I was like, no, oh, this movie yeah. sucks. Now. Rise of an Empire. Is that, is that what it's called? Are you talking about the second 300 movie? No, the movie that was kind of like 300, but it was about... Oh. I don't remember what it's called. I own that movie. I it's think. got Athena in it? Yeah, it's got Athena, and then it's got Ares in it. Was that... What was that? Well, what was the one? Well, you're not, you're not about, are you talking about Immortals? Is that what it was? Yeah, I think it was... I think, With I think, Superman? I think, I think that Superman? was it. Yeah, I think Henry that was Campbell? it. Yeah. Oh, boy. 
I've only seen that movie once. No, but I mean, after after Clash of the Titans, my, saw that with my dad, and then like at school, I'd be I'd be looking up because they had those Time Life books, Myths and Monsters, oh, Myths yeah. and Legends, and I used to get those books. <gasps> Excuse me. And then I would like just read about Greek mythology and all kinds of stuff like that, and all the pictures, and I would go through, and they always had they always find these coins from this play, from from Crete. Or the, the the island and it always yeah. they'd be have, they'd have a labyrinth on it like the maze oh, and yeah. I always look at it and go that maze isn't that hard because you go in on one end but it's like it's not like one of those mazes where like you walk in and you take a right up dead end okay I'm gonna go back this way and find another way like you, you could figure yourself out but it would just take, just take you through a bunch of dead ends and come around the actual labyrinth you go in one end it moves its way around towards the center then from the center back out around based, almost following the 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 passage right next to the original passage you walked in. Oh. So, but the, you'd come out the other end eventually, but yeah. in, but you'd always have to go to the center. That's where the Minotaur was. And I've seen I've seen some movies where they take the that concept of the Minotaur. I like the, crazy with it. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then they make it to where it's it's changed, like it's always changing, like the walls or anything are moving. Yeah. And so you're just path to make you always, yeah all loopy. It's like that's not the if you. Know, not, not like it's hard enough for I got this maze and this giant freaking monster in the middle I gotta try to beat. Yeah, I always liked that. I liked the, the Minotaur. But the myth of the Minotaur, how the Minotaur was created, it was like, man, those Greeks were like, I mean, you, know, you, you always have all these uh, these demigods, you know, like, yeah. but then they're always like, you know, the son of, there's the son or daughter or something like, usually the son, because there there's not a lot of female heroes in Greek mythology, but... They always like you know the the son of Zeus like Zeus got around man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he didn't he didn't care if it was his own daughter he was trying to mess around it's with. It's not like the, like, oh, the geez, it's man. Not like the Disney animated movie Hercules. Makes oh it yeah, seem like where he's happily married. Oh yeah, he's happily married to Hera because she would she would be awesome. <laughs> she never really gets that much praise. She's supposed to be like, what is her job? Is she just the Hera, the wife of Zeus? Thanks, thanks for my title, oh. the wife of. <laughs> 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 you don't give me anything cool like. You know, maybe she like maybe the, you know the god the goddess of like children or something yeah. like that. It's just something you know, like, something uh, cool, yeah, the I'm protector sure. of children or something, you know. But then what happens if you're like in because Greek? I mean, their medical couldn't be, couldn't be that good <laughs> back in the ancient days. You lose your kid stillborn, you're like, damn yeah. you, Hera, and she goes, what? <laughs> it yeah, wasn't it me. It wasn't what, me. It was uh, a harpy did it. <laughs> depending what part of the Greek area you were at if your kid was born not perfect they just chucked you off a oh, yeah. cliff I wonder if that really happened I think it did I mean, really? I think, I think that was a known thing from Sparta well that's the funny thing about the Minotaur is because the Minotaur was how does it go the story is yeah let's this, this, this get into the Minotaur this is a weird story Um, break it down for us it also has to do with uh, oh, what was his name was it da- was it Daedalus was he the one was he the creator was he the inventor because he's the one who built the labyrinth to house the Minotaur, but he was he also the know. one. I think I'm pretty sure it was Daedalus, because Icarus was his son who flew too who flew too close to the sun. Um, but apparently, how it worked was let's turn the lights down. Turn the lights down. Everybody, light a, light, light a candle. Um, <laughs> this could be kind of porn, but not kind of porn most people <laughs> like to watch. Um, there's a K. Okay, uh, the King of Minos. I think his name was actually Minos. The King of Crete. I think his name was Minos, or that was the that was the that was the area it was called Minos. Anyway, um, he was very jealous of his wife, and so he wouldn't he'd make her stay inside her room. She couldn't leave, and then but or then she was allowed to go to the beach or whatever like that. And then somebody said something negative towards Poseidon or something like that. So Poseidon charmed. Uh, the king's wife, the queen, to fall in love with this with this white bull, like an actual bull, oh, male cow, <laughs> or male whatever you call it, male bovine. Is that the proper is that the proper term? Yeah, I think so. So she's like, well, how can I get with this bull? And you're like, wait a minute, lady, what the hell's going on here? And then so she was like, hey, Daedalus, is there any kind of way you can make me a cow body? That I could climb inside so I can have sex with a bull. (laughs) And he goes, all right, whatever. (laughs) He's like, I'm up for the challenge. (laughs) So he made that, and that happened. Things things worked out. And uh, so she had a child who came out with the head of a bull. And that's how the the Minotaur. And to punish punish that, I think 
the king killed the white bull, and then he locked the minotaur up, and he had Daedalus make make him a labyrinth that they couldn't escape from. I, was, I mean, if the kid just thought about it, if I can leave in one direction, I can make it out of this pen. Yeah. This boy turned sooner or later. Then they had a war with somebody else, and they'd have to sacrifice seven of their sons and seven daughters to go to the minotaur to the minotaur to be to be eaten by the minotaur. Damn. Like on what cannibalism, really? And then, then the story goes that. Uh, Theseus went and has told his dad, when I return triumphant, they'll have the white sails up. So, I, th- I think it, I think that's it. They'll have the white sails up. And they would leave with the black sails. So they go. When they, if they came back with the black sails, then he then he didn't he didn't make it. Well, they went there, and some of these legends are all based on stupidity. So he goes, he defeats, he defeats the Minotaur with uh, Princess's help, because he has, she has the yarn. He, he falls out, so he knows his way back out. And gives him a sword, and he, he beats the Minotaur. And then they come back, and he's Theseus is so forgetful, he forgets to put the sails up. So his father sees him coming back with the black sails, and he throws himself to his death. Oh, <laughs> you're like going, oh my god, who comes up with this stuff, man? I mean, I I love I love stuff for stories alone because if legends are to go on, a friend of mine, John, tells amazing stories, and it's always like, I mean, the first time he tells it, it's, it's how it actually happened, but by the tenth time he's told it. He's in the story somehow, and it's taken on fantastic proportions, but I never stop him because I want to hear how this is going to play out. Because one day, this, this is going to be in books or something like that. Or the, it's going st- to be passed down from generation oh, to generation. Okay. That's how most myths and legends are, are done. So, let's see what else we got. No, well, you, mentioned, you mentioned Icarus flying too close to the sun. What's, what's the deal with that? It's an Iron Maiden song. No, it was. It's a pretty good Iron Man like, song. What happened? Like, did, he, did he get killed? See, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't... think after the Minotaur debacle, um, Daedalus and his son Icarus got locked up into a tower by the king, and they collected feathers and used candle wax to make themselves wings that actually worked and actually flew, which, man. Is that easy? Yeah. That, oh, guy's, a, that guy's a great inventor. <laughs> but he... I think what he basically made was he made gliders like wings or something like you know like oh like, yeah you know like what are, what are the suits where you pop your arms out and you're like like a flying squirrel yeah, basically that'd be squirrel, badass yeah, man so he he made one of those and then he was like don't fly too high because the sun will melt the wax and the feathers will go flying all over and Icarus not listening to his father because you should always listen to your you should always listen to your elders and the instructions <laughs> they give you because you should listen to their wisdom I think I think that's mostly what this is about he was like screw you dad and he flew up real high. And of course, the sun melts his wings, and down he went into the water and died. And then Daedalus got away. Way to go, Icarus. Yeah. Well, you know, kids don't learn from their kids don't learn from their darn kids. They don't learn from their their parents and stuff's mistakes. Yeah. But I mean, that's like where I think everybody. I'm I'm gonna throw this out there because I think this is a good message. Um, everyone should at least talk to your grandfather. If they're still around, talk to your grandmother, talk to your aunts, stuff like that, and find out a little bit about their life. Because I've told you how, like, I don't know much from my, what my grandmother did. I know she was a hard, hard-working woman, but I never really asked her what she did with her life. Right. But one of the summers I spent in, in Las Vegas, I asked my great-aunt Ethel what it was like when, when she grew up. Because I think she was born in 1913, just after the Titanic sunk in 2000, or 2012. Wow. Um, in 1912. So... I found out in the 30s, she was a flapper. Okay. Yeah. Which is funny because apparently, like, I mean, the kind of woman she was, she was like, I mean, she taught me my, she taught, like, you've never had dinner with me, like at a fancy restaurant. I am all about, you know. Proper. Yeah, pro- proper etiquette and all that stuff like that when I'm doing, when I'm doing that kind of stuff. But, like, normally I'm just like, yeah, I'm just me. But then. Yeah, you I was know. just watching you eat pizza while ago. You're just basically like smacking it out of your face, and just licking it. <laughs> and off. I like licking my tongue around, trying yeah. to figure out, trying to figure oh, out it, good. how to put it in, in my, God, right? how to put it in my head hole. <laughs> 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 no, like she taught me like you know politeness and manners and stuff like that. But like that's how they were back then. Like one of the funny things was they they told me how they used to have like parties where they drink, like you know they go to the speakeasy, go to yeah. the drinking parties, and they used to. To make a toast, they throw their glasses on the ground and throw the glasses into a fire. And I was like, that's weird. I, why would you do that? But then she was in the OSS Ooh. before it became the CIA. And I'm not really sure what she did. I think she was kind of like a chaperone or a, 
a secretary maybe just kind of like to go around with somebody so they weren't by themselves that almost sounds bad <laughs> no she was not a prostitute um <laughs> But no, she used to go like she's been. The, she'd been to Africa. She'd been to like oh, India. Yeah. All these places. She used to have all this cool stuff that I kind of wish I had, I had. But the thing, I think my dad got it, and then he then he either sold it or he put it in storage. And I don't know what happened to it after that. But he had all these like she had all these African pieces. They're always cool because like I was always like if I ever got those, I would get the really cool ones for myself just to remember her by. But I I would donate all the rest to like you know maybe like an African. African museum or something like that. Right. Because they had these paintings that were like really tall people with like, you know, baskets on their head, stuff like that. And I was like, what? I was like, what's up with the real tall people? Because they were stretched. We're talking like a six foot tall painting, but then it had like these really straight, like try to use most of your proportions. All these really tall, like they must have been nine feet tall people. <laughs> but I was like, what's with the proportions? She's like, no, there's this tribe down there that the average person is like maybe seven feet tall. So that group, really, Holy really God. tall. Yeah, there's really tall people, and I was like, "Well, and that's that's cool," because they had a painting and all all this kind of stuff. She also had something like a uh, elephant tusk that was carved. The ivory was carved into an oh. elephant train, which is kind of those one of these you know those things you're like, "That's not good," but yeah, it was a good piece of art. But I was like, I wouldn't want to destroy it. But it's one of those things you probably shouldn't have, so it's kind of yeah, like, like it's, eh, beautiful, but, it's beautiful, but uh, it came from an animal. Yeah. She had a zebra skin. Did you really? A full-on full on zebra skin. Like, the, they used to, remember it was rolled up under one of the, the hideaway beds, but it had a, a board that you could put up on the wall, and then you could put the skin over it, but they, they never they never hung, hung the skin up. But I remember touching it and feeling, feeling what a zebra would feel like, but this is a horse on... Mummified, yeah. <laughs> mummified hide. Anyway, um, you should always ask your elders about their life, and you can find out some cool stuff. Good advice, I say so. Let's see, Orpheus. Was an Orpheus in? Uh... Oh, that's that's that story. Okay, <laughs> was an Orpheus in? Uh... No, that's more. That's more. Morpheus, that's Morpheus. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. No, apparently his wife was bitten by a snake, and this is another one of those stories. He went down to Hades and he he asked her if he could bring her back and they were like yeah you can bring her back one condition you can't you can't look at her I, I think on the way up he couldn't look at her what does this say he made it to the throne of Hades the power of his music persuaded he was he was a musician uh, per, persuaded the king of the dead to release oh no one of those names Eur, Eur, Eurydice Eurydice the only condition was that Orpheus should not look. Should not turn to look back until they both set foot under the sun and out of the dark kingdom. Guess what happened? Oh, he turned <laughs> to look back. Yeah, he, he turned to look back to see if she was still following, oh. and she sank back down into the ground. Way to go. That's, did, he, did he have to go funny. back down and play another song? I don't know. It, says it was unconsolable. He roamed the wilderness singing sorrowful, pathetic songs about his forever love. There had to be a story there where... I always love it when it's a story of, like, like the one about Echo, where she... Yeah. She's the reason you hear your voice get called back to you. Because she can't speak by herself. She can only echo what you say. And I'm like, I'm like I like when they have they have a reason for this thing. Because they, they didn't understand how it works. So they just went, well, what if, you know, yeah. and they had a story. It's actually kind of a creepy thing to think about, too, if you're Because what if it really was an echo? Oh, you're, like yeah. going, you're like going, echo! And she goes, echo! And your voice, you're like going... You see that lady over there? <laughs> She's hiding. Damn, I thought I was hitting <laughs> She runs off. She goes, see that lady over there? She runs it because she can't, she can't say anything on her own. She yeah, has to repeat what you say. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what else? Oedipus. Oh, yeah, there's a story. Uh, that sounds from, I heard that day before. Uh, he wanted to kill his father and he wanted to marry his mother. Okay. Because that's, 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 Gre the Greek that's Greek mythology for you. <laughs> Don't label all the Greeks like that. Did he, did he succeed <laughs> in... Getting, oh, I dated a Greek girl. I can always keep forgetting that that Gabrielle was was Greek. Oh, was she like full? Was she full blood? Was she one hundred percent Greek? I think she was part Greek, part part Caucasian, oh. but she had more Greek features because she had the kind of the skin, darker skin. You know, than I have. Olive, I'm Irish, so yeah. And then she had the long black hair, and usually if she left it alone, it would turn wavy. But she'd like she liked to straighten oh, her hair. Okay. I was like I was like the curly hair better. Like the wavy hair. Straight hair is just meh. I have straight hair. 
kind of actually my hair's gay it's fabulous no, I'm <laughs> um all right now who's the one <laughs> excuse me you yes. ask, you ask me stuff and i'll answer because i'm a fountain of knowledge Greek, uh, knowledge well there's some i i know the story or something i have other I knowledge i don't remember who who was the one that was forever supposed to have his eyes pecked out oh that was was his eyes pecked out or crow's you mean prometheus that's Prometheus. He got he got his liver taken out. Or is it liver? Which one? Because it grows back every day. The yeah, yeah, that was him. Okay, what what was his? Uh, who was the one who had to hold the? That was uh, oh crap. Um, Atlas has the carry of the world on his back all the time. Oh yeah. He can't. He can't. He can't ever put us down. Oh well. That's, that's a strong motherfucker. Yeah, well, 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 Prometheus, what? What's He's just this? like. Do you, do you, Another century of this crap. <laughs> do you Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. I'm shake it up. <laughs> shake Earthquake. It up. <laughs> do you remember what the story was with Prometheus? Why he was forever doomed? He was the one who he gave us fire. Oh, that was his sentence. Yeah, for, yeah, that was his that was his punishment for giving us fire. Dang. Yeah. Thanks for being. Thank. Thanks for looking out for us, Zeus. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right now, <clears throat> who's the one that's forever? Pushing the boulder up the hill. Oh, who he is gets that? it almost to the top and it rolls back down. It rolls back down. I don't know. You think he? What is it? Why does he almost get to the top and then let go? I don't know. Isn't that? Isn't that the myth? I think that's one of the myths. That could be one of the punishments in hell, or that could be a uh, the nine levels of hell, or whatever that story is. I thought was there was a seven this? level. Seven levels of hell. Nine levels. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. I thought that was a specific guy. Who I know I'm probably forever. going to the fourth level. <laughs> I thought that was a specific person that was forever doomed to push. Yeah, I can't remember. Up. I can't remember who that was. It's probably it was one of those names that you hear. You go, oh yeah, I see him. Yeah, but I only remember like some of the. I I always loved the ant, the creatures of Greek mythology because a lot of them found their way into Dunge- Dungeons and Dragons. Well, you didn't did, did, did really talk about how uh, how uh, Medusa Medusa came, came oh. to be. There's a lot of stories, but the one I always heard more recently, which I think a lot of people like, actually like, but I think it not not for a nice way. The the fact that I think in the <laughs> in the original Clash of the Titans, she compared herself to Aphrodite. Though she was more beautiful than the goddess of love, and she was like, "Oh yeah, guess what I can do?" She's like, "Bang your snake, <laughs> oh, dang. and you're a snake, and you're so ugly, you you turn people to stone." Okay, thanks for the superpowers. <laughs> yeah. That's how I would view that. I'd be like, one, you know, I just wear a mask all the time. Because there, there are there are male Medusas, but they're called a different. Name. Oh, is it really? Yeah. That's oh. that's in Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. Maybe maybe it actually maybe it actually because I think some Greek mythology kind of goes into some Arabic stuff. So there are there are stuff? there are Arabic. Uh, I think there's Arabic creatures that are men. They can turn people to stone, but they they come from Medusa. Are they immune the to each other? Like like if you were Medusa, you could you could look at another Medusa because you yeah. turn each other to stone. I'm not sure how that works. Or they'd be like, yeah, how you doing? But the more updated version was uh, this priestess of Athena was getting raped in one of her temples, and Athena couldn't believe that this was happening in one of her temples, so she punished the priestess. I'm like one. Why didn't you hit a lightning bolt to the guy who was raping your yeah. follower? You stupid bitch. You heard me. You heard me, Athena. I don't care. I don't care if you're in the what's that place called in in downtown Nashville. I don't care. I don't oh, care if you're in the Parthenon. Yeah. That'd be weird if I went home and the statue just standing. Outside. I'd be like Nathan. Tapping her foot. She's tapping her foot. What did you say? Yeah. Nothing. What did you say about me? You're a goddess. You heard me. No. Um. Yeah, I said it. But she punished she punished the the the, the worshiper and turned her into Medusa. And they, I was like, they, they that's, that's not the nice. Punishment, like, does, their punishment that never made sense. The crime never, or the yeah, the punishment it? never fit yeah, the crime. Yeah, punishment never fit the crime. Like the uh, what was the one in the original? In the original Clash of the Titans, Calibus. Because he he hunted all of the all of one of the Pegasus, only one only one only one remained. And he just killed like every animal he could ever find, and then he got punished by Zeus and turned into that creature that you see in them Clash of the Titans, the original one. Oh, the look like a devil type. Yeah, kind of. He yeah. kind of looked like a satyr. Yeah. Like the like the goat man kind of creature. What happened to him? See, in the in the in the movie. Yeah. 
I know he was the one there because he he lost his hand to Perseus and he got a forked like a brass forked yeah thing on it and then he stabbed the head of Medusa when it was hanging up in the in the cloak and the blood dripped down and turned into scorpions and then uh, uh who was it one of yeah he uh. I can't remember the guy's name. He was really cool. He was like one of Perseus's close friends. He was one of like the captain of the guards. He threw Perseus's sword, and when he did that, uh, Calibus whipped the wh- whipped his whip around his neck and brought him in and stabbed him in the yeah. back with the thing. And then he died because he had also the poison, the blood of the Medusa on his yeah, on right. his on his on his fork forkhand. That'd be great though. You could eat, <laughs> you could eat with that. Um, but then he ended up like. He was choking Perseus with it, and Perseus threw the sword at him, and it hit him, and then he had this prolonged death scene, which took, like, five seconds too long. <laughs> it was just, like, it was, like, a stop-motion animation of him going, ah, and he was, like, kind of, kind of reeling back, and there's a point where he kind of looks at the sky, and it looks like he kind of mouths something, and then he just kind of dies. He falls forward, and he falls on the sword, and you can see it push the, push the rest of itself through him. It's, re- it's really good, you know, that stop-motion animation. Do they have that? Do they have, was that character of the remake? Yeah, he was. But he he was just basically he was yelling at Zeus and he Zeus smited him and he became Calibus, instead of becoming, instead of being tortured. It was just like it was oh. a weird it was a weird thing. But he was the one who walked up to that one guard and just ripped him in half. <laughs> oh, see, You're like, good that. lord. Yeah. See, a lot of that, a lot of that movie is you know, is dis- it, it's it's dismissive. You don't have to pay really pay attention. Yeah. But I don't know. There's all kinds of all kinds of stories, legends. It's just stuff I, I like because I like I like different I like the different kinds of stories, and I love I love myths because it's always like, how do they explain how they didn't something they didn't understand worked? Yeah. Well, you 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 were in Japan for a while. Is there any, any uh, Japanese myths or legends? Oh, I can only tell you from different ghosts, stuff like that. Oh, okay. And that's probably for that's probably for a supernatural, a supernatural one. But I knew that I that's more that's more superstitions than it is legends and stuff like that. Like oh, yeah, that's true. like Oriental ghosts can't go across water. That's why you never really see a straight bridge going across a river in Japan or or China. They're always like always in an, at an angle, like at a forty five degree angle. Like one go, it'll go one way and then stop and go this way across when you go across a bridge. They have weird bridges like that, <coughs> or a bridge that goes. Like a, like an arch because you can't go you know it's going straight across you're going in like a, a jumping fashion oh, okay. when you're going across the thing that's some something I read that might that might be off that might be off a little bit but that's why you can escape ghosts in in Japan you just run across just run across the river and go ha ha that's how they should have got away from the grudge nah she's she's not a ghost she's that's a, a curse she's a curse yeah Dang it. I I love that I don't care I love that thing. Although I would not like to look up into an attic and see that. Didn't you want to do that when I was supposed to move in with you at that one house? You were going to hang up a, a yeah, stupid head. Yeah, it had that little door. That you like you would have found me dead. You would have just dead, laying there with my mouth wide open like like the ring, though. I, I would, I'd I'd make sure I died just to get you, that you would never forget that face. <laughs> I could have gone to check out. Oh, here, I, here I got right. I go, and I'm just room. going, with that, that look on my face. Job, like, oh, like, oh, my God, I'll never forget that. <laughs> and I'll go, ha that's what you get. And I'll, can, I'll continue. No, I'll go, oh, my God, it worked. I scared him. <laughs> I scared him to death. No, I'll, 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 all kinds of legends. I don't really remember a lot of Roman legends. I like yeah, I, I like either. Egyptian stuff. Yeah, I, I, but I don't know a lot about Egyptian uh, like mythology. Or... Most of theirs just has to do with their gods and like how things... How things came to be. Yeah. Like, I can't remember how, how the Nile was built in some way. Somebody was dragging something, and that's how the Nile was built. I mean, I just know about the... How the we, have, we have old old American legends like, you know, uh, Paul Bunyan. Or is he more Canadian? <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think that's... We have... Uh, uh, I like that guy. What was his name? Um, Casey Jones. Yeah, the railroad track. Yeah. He went up against the machine. Yeah. He beat it and then died. Yeah, that's a tough dude, though. Casey Jones is something down the track. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I remember that, because I remember the little train going. Casey Jones is coming down the track. He had the crows. What I say now, Miss? Oh, yeah. Those horrible crows. Yeah, they were they were horrible. Yeah, we got... 
Granted, they're not as cool as Greek myth- mythology. Yeah, well, I mean, you've yeah, got Johnny like... Johnny Appleseed for Pete's sake. What was his fun. name? Johnny Appleseed? Yeah. That guy was weird. Was he a real dude? Of course. Or is that just a... Or is that, <laughs> well, again, I think... Of course, he walked around with a pot on his head and just planted, planted apple seeds everywhere. Because he had nothing better to do. We call that a bum nowadays. <laughs> he wore vivid overalls. He had him cut off in his shorts. Yeah. With a straw hat on. I was the shirtless. one who... He's Pecos Phil. Is that who that is? He was the one who... He created the Rio Grande and he did all this crazy stuff. He beat up most. Oh, yeah, that that's a nice story. He beat up so many American American Indians that he paint. That's why the painted desert gets its name from all the. He beat them all oh up gosh. and their their makeup their makeup landed everywhere. Their war paint. <coughs> They're going. That's a good story. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> that's <gosh>. horrible. <laughs> but it was the one. He, oh that that was more of the Disney one though because there was this girl that he liked and then. She was wearing a bustle. What do you call that? They used to wear back in the day. A little spring to make their butt kind of poke up. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what they're called. Right here. But then she was, she was riding his horse. She said she could ride his horse. And then he basically she got bounced all the way to the moon. <laughs> and, he, and he was sad for her. Forevermore. <laughs> like, even men back then like like the big booty. Yeah, even when it was fake. Yeah, they're like. Because hers was fake. It was made out of metal. Metal butt. Yeah, it was just like a cage you put over your, put over your butt. Well, they put over their butt, and then it kind of made your butt look kind of stick out. That's weird, though. I kind of like know more about Greek mythology than you do you do about your own countries. But yeah, Greece, I mean, but Greece well, I mean, is so much older, though. Yeah, it's so much older, and it's so, it's more ingrained. Like, I mean, you got Daisy. I'm gonna say Daisy Crockett. Jesus, <laughs> Dave, Davy Crockett. Daisy Crockett's probably his daughter. <laughs> She's like, I'm Daisy Crockett. And they go, We don't know who you are. But he's, you know he's, your father he's, is. He's a cool cat, though. David, David Crockett. David Crockett. David Crockett. Daniel Boone. See that? That's when you start. That's when you start getting those yeah. the, the the those tall legends kind yeah. of thing. You're like, going, but that really happened. There's all, all these kind of stories. Yeah. Like David Crockett could whip a pole cat. What the hell's a pole cat? Yeah. Like, wait a minute. Is that a cat from Poland? He I don't killed know. him a bar <laughs> when he was only three. He killed him a bar. What was he using it? Yeah. Well, like, did his dad drop the rifle? It just happened to be primed, ready to go, and he went... He didn't walk up... He didn't whip out a knife and go, bring it, and just start carving up He was three years old, so he was already out hunting by himself. That's what... That was back then, man. That's probably true, yeah. Like, Davey... Came out of the room, they were like, all right, boy, here's the dishes. Take him down to the creek. Go get us some dinner, Davey. Okay, Ma. All right, Ma, I'll be right back. Guns like three times as high because you know back then those rifles were like seventeen feet. Yeah, long. he just but he just he loaded everything. He set it up and set at the far end. You got twelve feet of gun between him and, him and the whatever, and he fired it. I always I always picture the the rifle from Last of the Mohicans. Oh yeah, the the the, the bigger long, long rifle. Yeah, I was like it looked like a swear it was like ten feet long. Because it always whip him up, and you're like, going, Jesus, you can yeah. hit the camera. Be careful. Because <laughs> they had those, and they had the whole the. The Alamo thing. Yeah. Because nobody ever really... Knew. Well, I mean, I think they have more information now. But the the beauty part is they have more information now because they got they got the Mexican side of the story. Like, when they try to just come up with our side of the story, you're not getting the whole story. We're, getting, we're just getting the best part of the story, though. It's what you mean, right? Well, you know, <laughs> you know his, history is written by, by the conqueror. That's right. <laughs> well, what's weird, what's, what's crazy is you think about, okay, you got the, the Battle of the Alamo. What was it? How, many, how many guys were in the Alamo? 300? Something like that. And they were taking on all of Santa Ana's... See, this, makes me, this makes me want to watch the Alamo now with uh, what's his name in it as Davy Crockett. Oh, yeah. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton. I like, I like that version because he was, he was there at the end. He was like the last one. Yeah. They basically just you know, executed him. He still was yeah. Like, ah! He's like, yeah. He was, he was like, gotta warn you, I'm a screamer. And they, they ran at him with the bayonets. He was like, yeah. Well, then you, then you, you, you read about that battle. You like the place. whole the John Wayne one where he's going down oh, swinging, yeah. you know, like going, yeah, that's cool, but yeah, that's probably not how it happened, but that's pretty neat though. But then you hear about the battle that happened since they gave them time to to get their forces. Yeah. And how yeah. they would, Santa Ana's forces were defeated so fast. Yeah, I mean, the they, battle, they didn't have a chance. No, the like, battle was like, what, half an hour long? It was some crazy short yeah, it was, time. Yeah, it was pretty quick. It was more like a running battle. Like, they were they, they got an ambush running away. Yeah. And they got whooped. That was that always reminds me of Pee-wee's Big Adventure, though. The Alamo? Yeah, because the, the funny part was, they go, there's no basement <laughs> in the Alamo. And we, we went on a, 
a theater trip down to San Antonio, and we all like one day we had off. We went to San Antonio, yeah. or we went to the Alamo, and we saw a basement in the Alamo. It's where they keep the lawnmowers for, <laughs> for all the stuff. So me and my friend were like, "One, there is a basement in the Alamo. Yeah, wait a minute. We got to find Pee Wee and tell him." But uh, no, the part where he gets knocked out when he's doing the rodeo thing, something like that. He he gets thrown from the horse and he's and he falls unconscious. And then the cowboys wake him up. They slap him. They go, "Hey, hey, son, you okay?" He's like, "I." He's like, "What's your name?" He goes, "I don't remember." And he's like, "Going, whoa, <laughs> where are you at?" And he goes, "He goes, uh, he says something." He goes, "I don't remember." And they go, "Well, do you remember anything?" And he goes, "I remember the Alamo." And all the cowboys go, "Yeah!" They start going nuts. <laughs> I love that part. Shooting off their guns. Woo! <laughs> or I think they were just going nuts. I saw that, that that sweet scene when he's in the when he's in the phone booth. I don't remember that part. He's talking to Dottie on the phone. He goes, "I'm in Texas." She goes, "Yeah, right." He goes, "No, I am." Listen, oh, the yeah. stars at night are big and bright, <laughs> deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> and he goes back to talking on the phone. I can't do a PB laugh. Hey, that's stuff that actually time. happens. Like if you sing that, they have to finish. I think it. I, it might. It may be true. <laughs> I wasn't born there, so I don't know the rules. I think but. it's a state law. I do know when you moved when you moved when you moved to Texas. If you went to elementary school, you had to learn Texas history. And when I went to high school, I didn't I didn't I didn't live in Texas till I got to high school. So I completely skipped the Texas history uh. thing. And I was always like, they don't, I was like, only in Texas where they teach you the, the the state hit. They make you learn the state history. Like you're like you're indoctrinated into it. That's not actually true though, because I remember going to school in Nevada and you learn about the silver rush and the gold rush and stuff like that. Cause that was big news out there yeah. during, during that time. And there was, there was, there was not a lot going on in Nevada until the silver rush. And that's why it's called the silver state. Silver state. Yeah. That, well, yeah, that's true. It, it, it don't, don't even and I, to, I totally state. forgot that until we went on a road trip and we were driving. Through and I was like, oh yeah. Nevada, the silver state. I forgot about that. I, I yeah, I had to stop and get my picture. I stopped and got a picture of the there's state bullet side. holes in every, every sign we ever yeah, saw. There was. We didn't, get, we didn't get to put any bullets in the holes. <laughs> Always, I, had my, I had my pistol with me, but I just didn't get it out and shoot it. Eh, probably a bad idea. Ah, there's no way around for miles and miles. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's pretty much, I mean, like, yeah. it's just stories. Yeah, Pan. yeah. we focus more on Greek mythology, but that's cool. That's, that's well, I mean, that's only really, there's probably all kinds of other, there's probably all kinds of other ones, but, like, the Greeks had more, I guess, weren't the Greeks the ones who basically in, invented Writing or storytelling, basically. Probably. That's why there's stuff. What was that? What was that one library called? The one that got burned. Oh, uh, the Library of Alexandria. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah. yeah, and they had like, they probably had tons and tons of scrolls, oh, yeah. and they got they all, all the stuff got burned. You know, which is probably a shame because, you know, how much information could probably be in there to, to help to help in this day and age. They yeah. might have had the cure for cancer. They that library, that library. I always heard the. And some lab was like, "I'm gonna watch this when I throw a torch in there." <laughs> and he threw a torch in there. Because every bad guy comes from Texas. That's right. <laughs> well, I always heard the uh, the saying that if they hadn't burned that library down, that Christopher Columbus could have been going to the moon instead of discovering. What? They were saying like that's how far back he'd get. He'd find himself on Saturn. Christopher Columbus couldn't even find America. That's true. He didn't. He found what he thought was America. One of the islands, right? One of yeah. the Caribbean islands? Have you heard about the, this, how some people are like taking away Christopher Columbus Day and calling it in, 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 Indigenous... Indigenous People Day? Is that what it's called? Yeah. They're still in, they're still on the, that day from Christopher Columbus. They're calling it in, in Indigenous People's Day. But you still get you still get the Christopher Columbus Day off. Yeah. I was like, I'll call it... That, 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 that's a hard word to say. Is there a better yeah, word? Is, is there a better way we can, better we word say, we can say? Can we just say engine day? No, you can't say engine day. <laughs> How do you spell engine? I N J U N. No, it's E N G A J G I N E. Engine. Like engine, you start you start on my car. But I'm about to start. Oh when, no, I was thinking when I go home. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get, I gotta, I have to be up early for bed. So we're gonna, we'll stop it there. Uh, I, again, are we, can, our next one, we're we doing. Are we rolling for next one? Or is next one yeah. Halloween? Uh. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. I think, yeah, I think the next one, I, wait, give me one second, let me check my calendar. All right. I'm not really, uh, I'm not really sure. Yeah, some of these episodes are just becoming us just, just talking, which is fine. Yeah, yeah, we still, we still hit the, 
how they pretty much. If I can just pull my sticky calendar up. So let's see. <laughs> well, the next. <laughs> that song's in my head. It depends. Do we want to do the Halloween episode like that the weekend before Halloween or, or do it like two weeks before Halloween? Um, eh, whatever. Because if we do it two weeks before Halloween, then yes, it'll be the next one. If not, it'll be the one after. Are we rolling or no? That's what I'm asking. Uh, yes. We are rolling? Let's roll. All right, here we go. Oh, wait. What's two? Music. Well, you know, I was gonna say I said yes, but I meant I meant no. <laughs> Cause we'll, we'll do okay, it. no music. <laughs> Suffer. Sorry. Suffer to all the children. Um. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no music, which means you don't get any music of, of us talking about all genres of music and soundtracks. Maybe next time. Well, we could just say that'll be the episode <laughs> after. We just rolled for the oh, episode okay. after. Okay. Yeah. After Halloween. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Okay, then then you then you'll get your music top. Yeah, lot. we'll do that one. So next topics. episode will be Halloween. That's cool though, because then I can go through and find a bunch of a bunch of stuff on music. Cause like like I I like the I like the '80s podcast, but I just wish I could have been like, oh, remember when I talked about this band? Here's some songs from that band. I'd like to be able yeah, to, yeah. to pre you know get get before that and be able to throw some song names out for specific artists yeah. and stuff like that. Because otherwise, it's just me reading off a list, which is basically what I was doing in that one. But I mean, we're yeah. s- we're just getting we're just getting the hang of it. We're still yeah, it's still pretty new. Uh, but you can email us at geeksmusing at gmail dot com. Uh, Twitter is at geeksmusing. Facebook is facebook dot com slash geeksmusing, and you can check out our YouTube. Just uh, search geeksmusing. I, we just put up the audio for that right now, but we might try to throw up some we might throw up some video game footage and all that for when the new games come out and everything. Oh, yeah. So, but for that'll do it for this week. So, for Geeks Amusing, excuse me, Geeks Amusing, this is Nathan. This is Ryan. I'm going to give you an explanation for why I say, what is the word? Oh, be, be a geek, be a nerd, but don't be a dork. What I mean by, you can be a geek, you can be a nerd, but by dork, I mean don't be a dick about about the things you like. Enjoy Enjoy them with everybody. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Have a good night or day. And also I have to say, happy birthday, Mark. Oh, that's right. We are recording Mark's this. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are recording this on Mark's birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, man.